Hello there, my fellow fans of the Imperial Navy and its big guns, and welcome to what will probably be the final video for the time being on battleships and Imperial capital ships. I am happy to say that we covered every type of Imperial warship from the relatively small destroyers to the huge battleships. Now, there might have been a few I missed or omitted, but that was simply because I found no lore on them. Moving on, let me tell you the topics I'm gonna present to you today. These are the famous Gloriana-class battleships, the Nemesis-class fleet carrier, and the obscure Vanquisher battleship. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about these three, shall we? The Gloriana-class battleship was a massive class of Imperial capital ship constructed during the height of the Great Crusade that was operational from the late 30th into the early 31st millennium. Only around 20 of these formidable battleships were ever constructed, and each one was unique in both form and armament. During the Great Crusade, each individual Space Marine Legion acquired at least one such vessel, which inevitably became the Legion's flagship, utilized by their respective Primarchs. This role was due to the warship's incredible array of firepower, which allowed them to single-handedly batter entire fleets or recalcitrant planets into submission. These warships were far larger than any other known class of Imperial vessel, with the only exceptions being the mobile Star Fortress known as the Phalanx, the Abyss-class battleships unleashed by the Wordbearer traitors, and the flagship of the Emperor. The largest of these vessels, named McCrag's Honor, is supposedly 26 kilometers in length, while another, the Iron Blood, is 20 kilometers in length. As expected of such monumental warships, the armor of the Gloriana class was incredibly thick and protected by overlapping void shields. This allowed them to absorb downright stupid amounts of damage. During the Great Crusade, these ships helped the Legiones Astartes swiftly conquer and bring newly discovered worlds into Imperial compliance, which in turn helped to establish the nascent Imperium of Man and its domination of the known galaxy. These vessels were effective at sundering numerous Xenos fleets, and were put to similar use in the Horus Heresy. During that conflict, several of these vessels were destroyed in combat, Due to the ailing state of the Imperium following the galaxy-wide rebellion, which cost the human realm dearly in both blood and treasure, the Mechanicum shipyards were unable to continue producing such powerful and advanced vessels. As far as the records show, no Gloriana-class battleships are still active in the 41st millennium, with the exception of the Vengeful Spirit, and many of them were destroyed during the Horus Heresy or the Great Scouring that followed it. The origins of the Gloriana-class battleship lies in the Sol system, although whether these mighty vessels were constructed in the great shipyards of Mars's Ring of Iron, or in the equally highly reputed docks of Saturn and Jupiter, is still a matter of debate. What is known is that the Glorianas were intended to become the flagship of the Space Marine Legions that would prosecute the Emperor's Great Crusade among the stars. It remains unclear how many Gloriana-class battleships were truly built in the past, for while it is certified that each of the Space Marine Legions could field at least one of these mighty behemoths of war, it is unknown how many battleships were truly built. As the Gloriana-class were intended as gifts from the Emperor to his sons, the Primarchs, it would seem sensible that the construction of 20 Glorianas was planned but as due to circumstances, only 18 Primarchs and Legions remained, so only 18 vessels were delivered. This would, however, not explain how Battlefleet Solar would have been able to field its own Gloriana class, namely the Amphion, which most notoriously participated in the Xana incursion at the beginning of the 31st millennium. So, the couple of missing Gloriana battleships, apart from the Primarch flagships, could have been. The Amphion. One of the linchpins of Battlefleet Solar, tasked with the protection of the Imperium's heartlands, 
The Amphion was dispatched at the head of a powerful fleet to lead a diversionary attack on the renegade forge world of Xana II, in what was later to be known as the Xana Incursion. During the Battle of Triton, Amphion was presumably destroyed, and the Akashic archives of the ship were recovered from the Hulk after the battle. The Chronicle of Ashes In the year 17 of M31, a task force of the Ultramarines Legion, composed of the survivors of the 19th, 48th and 207th destroyer cadres, encountered several renegade wordbearer cruisers. These were defending a lone Gloriana-class battleship identified as the Chronicle of Ashes, in the wild and uncharted space of the Dominion of Storms. Overwhelming the traitor escort craft with the brutal efficiency which marked the destroyers of the Ultramarines, they captured the Chronicle of Ashes in a furious boarding action. This involved nearly 300 Space Marines and two full days of bloody close quarters fighting as they swept the ship's innumerable decks clear of traitor forces. In the aftermath of their victory, the Ultramarines discovered something unexpected in the vaulted holes of the Chronicle of Ashes' upper decks. Stretching across every wall and onto the ceiling was etched the history of the Wordbearer's actions and undertakings in the twisting and fey language of Lost Colchis. Later investigation of this prize by members of the nascent Inquisition was to reveal a wealth of information regarding events that had previously been hidden to Imperial scholars. The details were transcribed into a series of tomes, now kept in the sealed archives of the Imperial Palace. Before the Chronicle of Ashes was finally cleansed, tech exorcised, and rededicated as the Lex Talonis. It was then presented to the Ultramarines in the year 22 of M31, and later incorporated into the newly founded Nemesis chapter. The Vanquisher-class battleship What few Imperial records survive of its construction indicate that the Ve Victus, a Vanquisher-class battleship, is a unique vessel constructed in the orbital shipyards of Hydrofer in the late 32nd millennium. Built at the request of the High Lord of Terra named Javor, the Ve Victus is the only Vanquisher-class battleship to have seen service in the Imperial Navy. No other vessel of this design has ever been recorded constructed, although since Imperial records of earlier millennia are so fragmentary, others may have well been built. Following its construction, the battleship saw action during the pacification of Magdalen and the saint Son Crusade. While on this extended crusade, the vessel was recorded as lost in the warp with all hands. Believed to have been thrown wildly of course by warp storms, the Ve Victus returned to real space some two centuries later. Records do not detail the intervening years. Over the next millennia, the starship's design underwent an extensive refit. Launch bays were removed in favor of forward torpedo rooms. The two antiquated bomber launch tubes are still visible on the vessel beneath the armored prow. Following heavy battle damage to the Ve Victus's main engines, the ship's propulsion system was radically redesigned. What could be salvaged was converted into the upper engine room, while a second lower engine was added. She was then returned to patrol duty. Aged and suffering continued problems with the twin plasma engine units, the V Victus was mothballed as part of the Imperial Navy's reserve in the 38th millennium, and left in stationary orbit around Dracast. The vessel's weapons and void shield systems were stripped for reuse. For long years the battleship was left to decay in orbit of that forgotten backworld. Recently, however, Increased pressure on segmentum resources as a result of the 13th Black Crusade has led to the Ve Victus being recommissioned. She is currently undergoing rearmament and crew training before resuming active service. The Nemesis Class Fleet Carrier There are very few examples of the Imperial Navy's Nemesis Class Fleet Carrier in any part of Imperial space, and, to date, they are without exception modified Emperor-class battleships. Many times have plans been approved to build a nemesis from scratch, only to be shelved again and again due to the Imperium's security requirements elsewhere. 
The Nemesis represents a huge amount of material and resources that are quite simply better put towards proven starship designs such as the Emperor and Retribution classes. However, in the fleet support role, the Nemesis has been proving its worth. Its capability of being able to launch a stunning amount of attack craft in a very short span of time has started earning it the respect of Lord Admirals everywhere in Imperial space. Though when compared to the Emperor class, it can be found a little wanting, as it must rely on escorting cruisers when it takes to the battle line, rather than its own firepower, which is at best mediocre. Because of this, it is usually seen only in the very largest of Imperial fleets, deep within the formation, lending out its fighters and bombers to wherever they are most required in the battle space. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Gloriana, the Vanquisher, and the Nemesis. I guess today's question should be, why wouldn't you want to command a Gloriana as opposed to anything else? Feel free to answer and discuss in the comments below. Also, in case you were worried or wondering, this is not the end of the Imperial Navy series. If nothing else, I would also like to cover the fighters, gunships, and bomber classes, which are, after all, still in service to the Navy, only for ground support instead. So stay tuned for those in the future. Was this video entertaining or informative to you? Please consider clicking the like button if the answer is yes, and subscribing for more videos in the future. I thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor protects.